Walking in a winter wonderland In the meadow We can build a snowman I don't know the words to the song You really don't need to know the words to sing a song Cause you just can make them up as you go along Da 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 Ba da 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 Ba da 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 Walking in a winter wonderland <laughs> Hello there Aaron Hello Nancy Hello Straw Hello James Hello MVI Hello Big Bird Iris a Barandin and uh, Ms. Well, don't call me Mrs. Well, call me Ms. Well. <laughs> I wonder if Ms. Well, she's probably about my age, maybe a little older. Do people still go by Ms.? Do people still go by Ms.? Maybe they do. Maybe they do. I am totally out of touch with so many things in life. But I'm wondering if people still go by Ms. I know in the 70s when the uh, Equal Rights Amendment and the uh, kind of the women's movement took off, uh, it was a very big thing. And I don't really know what it's, what it, was what it was for. I guess maybe if you're saying Mrs., it means you're married. And this is for independent women that don't want to identify with marriage, I guess. So maybe that's what it was for. Maybe I guess I could kind of get that. But does anybody out there still go by Ms. other than Mrs. Whale? Good morning, Angie. Uh, not original says it's the go-to always now. I guess. Maybe that's it. It's become... And I think, I, I've wondered, I've wondered. It doesn't even matter if I'm a jerk like they say. Why are they obsessed with my jerkiness? You know? So I think it has to do with, it's their uh, one ability to be relevant. And honestly, because of that, it gives me a lot of uh, inspiration because if I have people creating fake accounts and stalking me in my town and <laughs> posting pictures of me and making fun of everything I do, they'd get more attention if they hated on Taylor Swift. But user, there's probably a lot of people that already do hate on Taylor Swift. So they would just be, and I'm not saying anything wrong about Taylor Swift. She seems like a fine human being and a talented artist. But she gets a lot of negativity. But there's a lot of people that do. 
there's a lot of people that already hate on Taylor Swift. So they wouldn't really stand out. So by being one of the five people that hate Coffee with Ken, you know, they're 20% of the entirety. And the bigger I get, they think the more important they will be. It's the only thing I can come up with because it doesn't matter what they say about me. Even if it was true. <laughs> even if it was true. And it's not, but even if it was true, who cares? All right, Ken's a jerk. He's fake. He's a narcissist, con artist. <laughs> Whatever else. He works as a waiter. <laughs> I do work as a waiter. I do. I don't know why they like to make fun of me. I think it's their only touch, their only ability to connect in some, to matter. Which is sad. But good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Uh, my name is Ken Tracy. And uh, this is Coffee with Ken. It is Saturday morning. It's November 23rd. It is, I can't believe it. Not that it's 737. And I hope none of you were too disappointed or on the edge of your phone, on the edge of your seat going, I wonder if Coffee Will Ken will go live today. It usually goes live between 530 and 630. But he had to wait tables last night. So we'll cut him some slack. Maybe he slept in. And I did sleep in. And I did sleep in. Are you liking the unshaven look, Laura? It may only have a day or two left. It may only have a day or two left. <laughs> I don't know. Not original. You're making me worry. You're making me worry. Somebody said my neck looks red. Is it the lighting? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm giving you too many close-ups of my neck. Maybe from now on, I'm going to go like this. It's not a rash. It's not a rash. Leave me alone. Stop teasing me. You do this. You do this. You get on before you've showered every morning and talk to a camera up close. Give it a try. <laughs> Let's see how perfect you guys look. You might have a red neck as well. I don't know why. And, uh, got some sun. Maybe that's it. Hello, Tanya. Too much coffee, Dill. I've been cutting back on my coffee. I'm a little worried that I'm not drinking enough. Hello, Melissa Sue from Wisconsin. How are you? Put up my dukes. Okay, somebody was talking. Hold on here. Somebody here. I'm going to go back to them. Somebody. Hey, Melissa Sue, thank you so much for following the live creator. Uh, somebody said my daughter attends Duquesne and plays soccer there. Do you guys know why I am wearing this Duquesne Dukes shirt? I mean, there's a couple reasons. One, I was running low on laundry. <laughs> I was running low on laundry, which is somewhat of a concern. I've spent the last week and a half kind of hanging out in my car. I like to call it hanging out because I don't really think I'm living here. I'm just experiencing it. And I'll tell you what, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I slept great last night. I mean, I wish it had a coffee maker. And I wish, as I just mentioned or alluded to, it had a laundry machine. But other than that, you know, right now, I'm really not missing much at all. Show us around your place. Kim, uh, no, I thought about it, but I'm not going to. I, I didn't get it ready for guests. I didn't get it ready for guests, but I do have a lot of thought about it. Will Bill said he digs my shirt. Oh, yeah, look at this bad boy. It's a Nike. It's high quality. I have some guys, uh, the assistant coaches... Uh, follow me on Instagram of the Duquesne Dukes, the basketball team. 
And about a year and a half ago, one of them reached out and said, hey, my name's Ari. I'm going to use his name because I don't know why he'd care. My name's Ari. And uh, it's uh, one of my coworkers, one of my buddies' birthdays tomorrow. Would you do uh, me a big favor and send him a happy worth birthday video or sing him a song or something like that? And I did. And uh, they follow me on Instagram and they start their mornings with me. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I hope they follow me on TikTok because this is where I'm going live. Uh, otherwise, they're just getting my shorts and my reels. That's not enough. But they were saying they started their morning with me. And I think they do. Because let me tell you, they got me <laughs> front row seats to the DePaul Blue Demons Duquesne Dukes game uh, a week and change ago. Last Friday night, actually. And not only did they get me front row seats, they got me a plus one. I told them I was going to go by myself. But either way, they thought I might bring a date and impress her with my good seats at this uh, Division One basketball game. And I'll tell you what, it was really cool. And what was even cooler is how the coaches were turning around and going, hey, and coming over and shaking my hand. I felt like somebody famous. I'm not somebody famous. I'm just a guy going through his day, doing the best he can. No, Kim Williams, I would like some decorating tips. A, I was a realtor for 17 years. B, I've got lots of thoughts on that, which I'll get to in a moment. But anyway, for those that have been watching a while, I did not bring a date, user. I did not bring a date. I went solo. I did not bring a date. I actually thought of inviting a buddy. Uh, but then I thought, it. I don't know, let's just go by myself. Are they 0-4? Are they going for it? They got blown out. I felt bad. Uh, that's bad. That's a bummer. I could probably help. I could probably help. Coaches Ari Rickster. What's the head coach's name? Drew or True the third? I think I could help. You got a spot for me on the bench? I mean, I watched your team. I mean, I honestly was evaluating. I was looking into your players' hearts and your mind, their minds and their souls and their hustle. It's interesting because from a fan's point of view, especially on a front row, I could see into the players' eyes and who I would want uh, on the free throw line for me with the game on the line and who I wouldn't. And I'm not being mean because, believe me, if you look into my eyes and you wonder, would I want this guy on the free throw line with the game on the line? No, you wouldn't want me on the free throw line. I would choke. But I'm not a Division One basketball player. But, uh, yeah, I could see who... Uh, yeah, I think I could help. Okay, you think a lot of their best players graduated last year. I mean, they got some good players. They got some guys hustling. and uh, I mean, every they were hustling. Maybe DePaul's a good team. Maybe DePaul's a good team, but they were hustling. You know, they were trying hard. The coaches were coaching hard. Uh, it's got to be a tough job. It's got to be a tough job because, you know, if you lose a ton of your best players and you got some new guys that you're uh, uh, trying to work on and improve, uh, yeah, must be a tough job. But I'll tell you what, it's a big staff. They were coaching their hearts out. The uh, players were playing. They might have just been a little overmatched. They were at DePaul. It was on the road, so they might have been overmatched that day. Uh, and it was closer than the final score looked. Uh, but as is that habit near the end of, okay, DePaul's 5-0. and oh. Maybe they're pretty good. Maybe they're pretty good, and it was a uh, uh, road game. And in college basketball, the road game matters. But you said Duquesne is 0-4. But I am still proudly representing the Dukes. If they make it to the tournament this year, and from what I've heard from this Coffee with Ken show, it doesn't seem the odds of them are very good of making the tournament. But I'm excited to have some gear. I got. They gave me a couple shirts. This is one of them. It's my first time wearing it. I feel it looks pretty good. 
they might have thought I was a little huger because I think they might have got me an extra large. But either way, it's comfy as hell. It's nice when you get a nice quality thing. Uh, and I'm sure, you know, they don't pay for it, but somebody paid for it. But when you get a quality thing, it just feels good on your body uh, versus when you get something cheap. And believe me, as a frugal guy, I've been known to buy some cheap things. But I've also been nice, uh, known to buy some nice things too, and you can tell the difference. What watch is this? This is a Tag Heuer. I don't know what it's called, but it's a Tag Heuer, and this is my watch. I've told a long story about this watch. I posted it. I'm not going to tell it again because it brings up too many painful memories. This is my second one of these watches. I bought my first one in... I don't know, like 1993 or 1992. And I was making good money and I'd never had kind of a fancier watch. And uh, my girlfriend at the time and I were uh, at the jewelry store and I said, hey, these look kind of nice. What do you think? Should I get the black face or the blue face? I thought about it as I tend to do. And uh, uh, wondered. But at the end of the day, I think getting a blue-faced watch would be fun every once in a while. Uh, would be fun every once in a while. But as an everyday watch, I think the black face is cooler. So that's my story with my watch. <sighs> Never seen a homeless guy with a tag hoyer. Well, again, I don't think I'm homeless. I think I'm living my best life. I think I'm living my best life. I really do. I haven't even gotten to my coffee yet. I haven't had one sip of coffee yet. And this is me. This is me. Uh, Dubs, R Dub says you're just paying for the name in some cases. Yeah, some cases, but I think generally you're not. I think generally you get what you pay for. I think generally you get what you pay for. Oh. I'm feeling horrible now. I am feeling horrible. I think I put an intentional mental block on your name. I know everyone else's names, but there's a lovely young woman who watches me every day. Not every day, but it's, oh, it's Sherry. It's Sherry. I remembered. I remembered. I was feeling so guilty. I think sometimes there's two dangers in life. You can put a like a, a block on your brain and not remember something for some reason. And for some reason with this woman, I've done it with her name. Maybe Sherry's not that common of a name. Although we thought of the Journey song yesterday and that was how I was going to remember it. And I forgot it again today. But what's even worse than not remembering is when you remember someone's name wrong. When you n remember something wrong, like you've got a good memory, if you know what I'm saying, but you remembered it incorrectly. So you'll always remember that. Hey there, Tommy. Hey, Tommy. You'll always call him Tommy, but the problem is his name is John, but you can't get Tommy out of your head and John <laughs> to replace it. Uh, yeah, no, not original. I forgot. Uh, can I get to my coffee? R-dubs, you guys are asking great questions. Is, okay, it's Joe time really wants me to get to my coffee, and I appreciate that. Sherry. Oh, mo Sherry. Oh, mo Sherry, amor. La, da, 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 da. La, da, 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 da. That's why Hulk Hogan called everyone brother. That's not a bad idea. But I can't call Sherry brother. Sherry. Sherry. I might start calling you brother. That might be your nickname. That might be Sherry's nickname. Brother. Wouldn't that be kind of funny? Okay, I might it might it might replace Shetty and become brother. But enough about Shetty. 
Uh, for those that have been watching a while, you know this is not just a show about me uh, talking. You know it's also a show about me sharing my love of coffee. Not Shetty and my love of coffee. Uh, sharing my love of coffee. And with that in mind, I've got a nice hot cup of coffee in front of me. And I'm so excited to uh, have my first sip. My hope is wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you got a hot cup of coffee in front of you as well. Cheers to us. Oh. I tell you. Dunkin' Donuts with cream is a really nice cup of coffee. Let's have another sip. Oh. Somebody asked if Starbucks earlier was worth it. Uh, we were talking about like value when you buy good products versus cheaper products. And so somebody asked, well, is a cup of coffee at Starbucks worth it? I'll say you wholeheartedly it is. I'll say you wholeheartedly it is. Starbucks is one of the best values out there. You get to go. You get to sit in a coffee in a shop with comfortable chairs, with free Wi-Fi, free refills on your coffee, and you can sit there all day for three dollars for a three dollar cup of coffee. If you have the app, they give you free refills. They'll refill your water. They're even so cool and so progressive of a company that you don't even have to go buy anything. You can go and just sit there. You can go and just sit there if you wanted and get water and they'll give you water and they'll have a nice spirit about it. They won't be mad at you for it. I see it happen because I spend a fair amount of time. Julie says, excellent coffee. I think coffee is, uh, I think their coffee is great. Uh, but again, I think that's a personal taste. Some might prefer other coffees, but I think they're buying a cup of coffee at Starbucks because I'll have people suggesting, telling me uh, I shouldn't shop or buy coffee out. I should save that money. It's the best three bucks you, money can buy. Again, you know, you're looking for something to do. You don't want to go to the bar. You're single. You want to people watch, but you don't want to be sitting at home alone. Go to Starbucks. Bring your laptop if you want to do some work. Get your work done. It can be your office. Hook into their Wi-Fi. Sit and send your emails. Say hello. Be social. Be out in the community. Uh, I think Starbucks is probably one of the best values. Uh uh, out there. So I am a huge fan of Starbucks. I know their stock's struggling and I think their stock will continue to struggle because I think they built too many of them and you're getting more and more competition in that space. Uh, cause half of Starbucks profits, I believe come from their drive up. So you're getting these little micro coffee places that are creating just that don't have the dine-in experience that I so cherish and um, have lines <laughs> getting their coffee. Are you serious? Wait, user said, don't forget to ask Duncan for the 10% discount for 55 and older. It adds up. Heck yeah, it does. That would have saved me 35 cents. I didn't know they gave a 10% discount for those 55 and older. I'm excited. I want to go back and buy another cup of coffee just to get the discount. I'm frugal, but I may not be smart. <laughs> well, Ken, you're wasting $3.15. Yes, but I saved 35 <laughs> Did I check out of the extended stay? Yes, I did a week and a half ago, and I'm proud to report in that week and a half, I've saved $550. Think about that. Think about that. I'm a guy that's twice divorced. Uh, building a content creation business called Coffee with Ken. Waiting tables. Uh, waited tables till 1130 last night. And I'm working again in like two and a half hours. So I <laughs> I hope I don't have too much to say. Uh, but anyway, um, 
twice divorced, four beautiful kids, paying child support, uh, and has been struggling. Switched careers three years ago, but even that before that, I was a realtor 17 years, and even the inconsistency in a realtor's pay when you're paying child support and you have bills to pay of your own uh, was really challenging. And three, just about three years ago, is it really three years ago? Yeah, it's just about three years ago I left the real estate business. And I'll tell you, when you're switching careers at 54 and you're twice divorced with child support to pay to two or for four beautiful kids, uh, it can be tough to keep a roof over your head. And I've had to do weird, crazy, adventurous, fun things. I rode my scooter out to Yellowstone and worked as a waiter there for uh, just two months this summer. But while there, I learned, A, that waiters make a fair amount of money, and B, I could do it at a really high level, and C, that I kind of enjoyed it. So I packed up my scooter, rode back from Yellowstone, checked into an extended stay, got two job offers the following couple days uh, from restaurants, and am still working at one of them. And uh, worked there last night till 11.30. I started at four, so I worked seven and a half hours. But I'd say I made a really good amount of money. It's hard for me to compare, really, because as a realtor, you make either nothing or you make a check for five grand or something like that, or sometimes more, sometimes less. But often, most times, you'd make nothing. But then every once in a while, a couple times a month if you sell a lot of homes, but once every three months if you don't, uh, you'd get a check for five or ten grand, and you go, wow. If I just figured out how to do this more and collect more of these big checks, I'd make a ton of money. But even after 17 years, I never really figured that out. So, three years ago, I don't think I liked being a realtor. I don't think I thought I provided any value uh, to my customers. I thought uh, there's... 10,000 other realtors in the town I'm sitting in alone and you could buy or sell a home with them and the experience that I trying my hardest could give you I couldn't differentiate myself in my mind I couldn't tell a buddy yeah I could explain to him I do think I'm smart I do think I hustle I do think I'm I scare people a little bit and can negotiate, use that as a negotiating tactic to get you a little better price. Uh, but other than that, I couldn't really differentiate myself. And so I left real estate three years ago and have been uh, waiting tables the last five or six months. And uh, still on my journey, drinking coffee. So, 10 days ago, I checked out of the extended stay where I was paying roughly $60 a night. It was okay. It wasn't home. I wasn't bringing all my stuff, accumulating crap. Uh, was living fairly sparsely in there. But, I mean, it had a bed. It had cable. It had utilities were free. It was okay. Had a bathtub. I like baths. But... My restaurant slowed a bit uh, the last month or so after Halloween, I think. And I, they, there weren't enough shifts to go around. They cut back some of their operating hours and there weren't enough shifts to go around. And we all got our hours cut back a little bit. When I first started, I was working like six days a week there and able to cover my financial responsibilities and able to spend $1,600 a month uh, in an extended stay, but I was riding a scooter and didn't have a car. Long story, <laughs> long story. Used to have a pretty nice car. Now I have a car I love. Now I have a car I love, but either way, uh, the weather was getting colder. I was still riding my scooter. I wasn't able to pick up my kids. I have two beautiful little ones and you can't pick up two beautiful little babies on a scooter. <laughs> so I, uh, about three weeks ago, I was sitting in my bathtub and <laughs> two words came to me and they were Kia Soul. <laughs> no, 
never really knew anything about a Kia Soul. I think somebody had mentioned they're fairly low priced cars. And I sat in my tub, I got on the, my phone, <laughs> looked it up, it says new, they're like 21 to 23 or $4,000. Hello, Edward. And uh, said, huh, that almost looks like a little baby RV. You know, it's kind of got the same shape as an RV or a Ford Transit or one of those uh, Sprinter vans or uh, the Ram Pro Star, I think it's called. But it looks just a little smaller. I wonder if I could sleep in that thing. I wonder if I could sleep in that thing. And uh, it turns out I can. It turns out I can. And I bought this three weeks ago and have been staying in it, I guess, for the last 10 days. And I will tell you what, as I was telling a buddy at work yesterday, as I was telling his buddy at work yesterday, if I didn't have two little ones that needed their own room and needed toys and needed stuff, if I was a single guy, uh, not a dad, I don't know that I would ever buy a home again. I don't know that I would ever buy a home again if I was a single guy. I just don't. I just don't. I mean, I'm outside of a gym. I belong to a gym. I shower there every day. I work out every day. I'm going to get in ridiculously good shape. I'm saving so much money. And not missing really anything. Somebody said, why not buy a uh, home for an investment? Uh, well, I never was buying a home. I was always paying rent. I mean, I did buy a home once. But I think there's a lot of costs associated with owning real estate. Uh, I think real estate can go down. We're not seeing it right now, so it only goes up. But either way, investment aside, the freedom that you have to do whatever you want. You know, again, if I'm a single guy and I'm going, hey, I'm mad, say I'm mad at my boss or tired of the cold weather. Had a good ship last night. I could drive down anywhere I wanted. Get a waiter job there and do it there. I'll tell you what. Maybe people ask me if what I do differently if I was in my 20s. I wouldn't do anything different. But maybe I'd just do that and just cruise around. I don't know. Seems kind of cool. Seems kind of cool. Seems kind of enjoyable. And I'll tell you what, I'm enjoying this coffee. Mm. The Patriarch Podcast says it looks cold. Well, I'm coming at you from Naperville, which is a suburb of the sh Chicago. And it was 36 degrees there this, here this morning. And I'll tell you what, I was toasty warm. I was toasty warm when I woke up, and it felt so good. Another thing I'm going to do, when I do eventually get a home, I think instead of making my bed with all these sheets and fancy pillows and stuff, I'm just going to get one pillow, bring my sleeping bag in there and my heated blanket, and turn the temperature way down at night. And wake up toasty warm in my heating blanket and my sleeping bag. Because I tell you what, it feels good. Feels like you're back in the womb. You're warm and safe. Kind of does. I'm not kidding. What did I do before waiting tables? I've done several things. I was a realtor for 17 years. Uh, I have a finance degree. I was a stockbroker for a while. I left real estate three years ago and uh, worked at Target for seven months. Realized I couldn't pay any bills working at Target 
and uh, support myself in any fashion. So left that and became a waiter earlier this year out in Yellowstone. And that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Oh, I was thinking about something about realtors. It's funny. I belong to this gym. And I'm in Naperville. And I think if you're going to be a realtor, you have to have... And I'm not saying I don't. Because probably if you've got a show called Coffee with Ken, you have to have a really oversized ego. Because you see your name and your face... Everywhere. I drove by a friend, a coworker who's really successful in the real estate business, and she's got her name up huge on this building in downtown. And I was just thinking, wow. You know, you got to really like putting yourself out there. Be very comfortable putting yourself out there. There's a woman, uh, they have a, one of these little TVs in the gym. And she must pay some amount of money for the advertising it gives her. And they have some rolling ads. But there's a young, attractive woman uh, that says, hey, if you want to buy, if you're looking to buy or sell, call me for a free consultation or something like that. And she's young. She's attractive. She's got the, she's from Naperville, got the same area code as me, works at a big company. I was a realtor for 17 years. I'd never heard of this woman. So she maybe has never sold a house. She may have never sold a house. Yet, she may have, but I she hasn't sold a ton of houses. Or I know her. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but I am saying there's a certain component to buying your business in real estate. And he, with the deepest pockets that can advertise the most, is the best or biggest realtor because they sell the most homes. Do I have a show now? Amy, you're watching my show. What are you even talking about? What is Amy even talking about? Do I have a show now? Are you watching something, Amy? This is my show. This is my show. Diane asks, what am I doing for mail? I'm hiding from it. I'm hiding from it. I, As a realtor, one thing I did was send a lot of handwritten notes because I realized they made people feel good. Little thank you notes or, hey, just think of your notes. Things like that because they make a difference. People used to send letters and postcards and what have you. Uh, but I'm hiding from my mail. <laughs> Nothing good comes in the mailbox really anymore. Bills. I'll tell you when you get divorced, attorney's letters. You don't want those. Those are just scary bills. <laughs> Saying mean things about you. So that's what I'm <laughs> that's what I'm doing about my mail. Yeah, not original says we get very little mail. You get a lot of stuff in your mailbox. You get a lot of stuff. You know, you you get a lot of realtor postcards <laughs> saying, "Hey." Uh, some people stop mail and paying taxes on YouTube. I don't know what that means. Dill Pickle likes me. Well, that's correct. That's nice. I have very white teeth, do I? I don't know. I mean, I have normal white teeth. I think the camera, I think uh, TikTok does a good job of getting the lighting, making you look tan. Maybe that's why somebody was saying I have a red neck earlier. Uh, I think the lighting on TikTok when you go live makes you look pretty good. Well, thank you, Dill. You're making me blush a little bit. Dill Pickle, who I'm assuming is a man says, I'm a very beautiful man. <laughs> I wish women liked me half as much as gay men did. Just half as much.
The stamp price is going up. Every price is going up. I was at uh, Dunkin' Donuts right now, or, or a little bit ago. I didn't get my 10% discount. And uh, I will next time I go, I promise you, because I'm 56. But they sell like 30 munchkins for, or 10 munchkins for like a buck 20 or something, or more. Wait, no, 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 for three bucks. And like 50 munchkins for 15 bucks. I tell you, they have shrunk those munchkins. They're now about this big. And I don't think they're as good as they used to be. I, well, they're not as good because they're not as big. And that little munchkin's not worth 30 cents, I don't think. Well, thank you. What is the munchkins? I mean, have you seen the Wizard of Oz? It's the little people that live in the munchkin land. <clears throat> it's also little donut holes. Ah. Well, you guys are fun today. You guys are fun today. Is it National Espresso Day? I kind of make fun of espresso drinkers. Sometimes I tell you I work in a restaurant. It's kind of a nice restaurant. Oh, I've got a nice mom in a white minivan with a young little child. She's putting them in. Oh, she looks like she's got grandma there helping her. So there's two adults with one child. Let me tell you when the numbers turn and it's one adult with two little ones, it's not as easy. It's not as easy. <laughs> Do I have shifts today? Yes, I'm working today. I'm working. I'll tell you what. I got off work eight and a half hours ago. I left the restaurant at 1130. Granted, I made an obscene amount of money or a fairly obscene amount of money. And I'm going to go in and work at 1045 today. I don't know how long my shift will be. It could be a short one. It could be all night. But if it is all night, I'm going to make an obscene amount of money today. It'll probably be a short one. I might only get out of there with like a hundred bucks or something, but I don't know. But I could get out with three or four hundred bucks. Feels good that I'm working again tomorrow. So I haven't been working as often. They've cut back shifts, but I am working three days in a row. And like I was saying yesterday, I was in a great mood because uh, for the first time in a long, long time, on a consistent basis, and it's only been 10 days, but I have far more uh, money coming in than going out. I mean, maybe not far more, but I have more money coming in than going out. And I cannot tell you how much, how good that feels. Uh, Cause when every night you put your head on the pillow, you go, you worked hard, but you made some money, but your expenses are more than the money you have coming in. That's just a, uh, yucky feeling. That's a yucky feeling. And now, because I've down-costed, uh, suddenly I have options open to me that I didn't have before. And that feels good. A couple thoughts on uh, car life, if you will. And this isn't really car life. I'm just doing it for fun, for an experience. I mean, I'm doing it because I'm saving 60 bucks a, a night, and I need that. I'm telling you, if you guys tried this, you'd wonder why you want any single man out there, any single man out there, I am telling you, buy any car you want and just live in it for a while and see how you like it. I bet you you do. Join a gym, shower there every day, work out every day. So much flexibility. When I, the first day I got my Kia Soul, I was on YouTube and I looked up living in a Kia Soul. There's people that do. I think the people that live in cars and live in minivans and live in, uh, still have too much stuff. I think the less things I have, the happier I am in here. And I know I have too much stuff. I know I have too much stuff. But I think until you do it, it's really hard to figure out what you need and what you don't. Uh, 
Uh, top five tips for newbie living in a soul. <laughs> Get rid of everything you own. Get rid of almost everything you own. Seriously. Uh, you'll find you'll have more money. It's easy. It's so ridiculous how much stuff we carry around. I keep looking in back because uh, I've got a couple pairs of shoes that have been kind of just taking up space in the back of my car. And every time I got some water bottles down there too. You want to see one? See these you need. You need a couple of these. Water, important. Dress shoes that you might wear two times a year aren't so important. And slippers I haven't really found a great use for either. So I had a pair of dress shoes and a pair of slippers that behind my passenger seat kind of taken up valuable real estate that could be used for water bottles and garbage bags. And I recognized they were just sitting in the bag, getting in the way. I put them in the trunk, but they're on their way out. I don't know where out is. If I go to my sister's on Thanksgiving, I might put them back in storage there. But I'd say get rid of almost everything you own. Get on the road, fill up the gas. Stop what you need when you need, uh, uh, when you realize you need something, uh, you buy it. What do I do for meals? I mean, I do various things. I do various things. I mean, I go to the grocery store. I buy a lot of fruit. Uh, there's other meals I have. I'll tell you what works real well, and I'm not trying to do this forever, but I think my little experience could help some people. I get those little cans of white chicken and water, uh, or the bigger cans, and they're like, I don't know, I think at Target you can get over like 250. It's white meat chicken. I don't know how healthy it is for you, but it's full of protein. And you open those up, they're 250, and that's a pretty good meal right there. Uh, you get a lot of fruit, you eat a lot of apples and oranges and peaches or what have you. Uh, <laughs> one meal I really like, by the way, if I'm at the grocery store and it's cool outside and I see like a bean dip, you know, with a layer of guacamole and some cheese and some olives on the top, maybe some onions. I'll tell you what, that's pretty damn good as a meal. Oh, yes, it is. But again, you save so much money doing it. You really could buy anything you wanted. Uh, yeah. Uh, do I need a crock pot from you? No. <laughs> I don't need a crock pot and I don't know why I would need one from you. Again, you save so much money, you can really buy anything you want. It's kind of nice. I mean, not anything you want. You certainly can cover your financial responsibilities and that feels really good. And I'd say a couple things. If you're living a cold weather, buy a sleeping bag. You don't need one of these super thick sleeping bags. Uh, I mean, I got one that's good for 35 degrees, but you get a blank, uh, electric blanket alongside it and it feels so good. It feels so good being wrapped up snug and tight in your sleeping bag and, uh, get the heater going. Somebody asked a little bit ago if I bought a new generator. I did. I replaced the generator I had. This isn't a generator. It's a power, uh, power station. They're kind of strange because you'd think they'd be more... You'd think you could run a coffee maker or a crock pot or a hair dryer with them, but you really can't. You know, you can light a light bulb and you can heat a heating blanket, and that's really what I need it for. Uh, and I don't know if this one's going to be good enough, but this is a 300-watt Jackery brand uh, that is selling at Best Buy for $159. This cord right here means it's plugged into the car and it is charging. It's currently was at 21% power last time I checked. And uh, it's charging while the car's running. I might bring it into the gym and plug it in while I'm working out and showering. Uh, should be hopefully close to charged when I'm done. And then I'm going to go work today and make some good money. <laughs> 
cover my financial responsibilities, start sending. I haven't sent even the first payment to my car dealer, but I'll tell you what, uh, I think I'm going to be not, I'm going to be making more than the minimum payments. And that feels really good. And I'm digging my way out of stuff and doing what I have to do, but still living a really enjoyable life. Uh, And having fun. Seeing my kids. I don't get to see them this weekend, but it's not because... It's because I'm working both days. I'm working both mornings. Opening the restaurant both days. But I have off Monday. The restaurant's off Monday. And I'm scheduled to see them on Tuesday. But maybe I'll reach out to my ex-wife. See if I can see them on Monday. Um, somebody asked about this again. And again, if you have any crazy... Uh, this is my second one. I bought one and uh, paid $199 for one. And it was fine, but it wasn't powerful enough to keep my blanket going all night. And I don't know if this one will be either, but this is like set, uh, just a few percent more powerful. Uh, and uh, was cheaper. So I figured let's give this one a try had a little longer kilowatt hour capability, which I think is what's important when you're, uh, 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 looking for one of these Chipbot scolds me. Okay. Chipbot. Cause the 700 wasn't really a 700 chip is my guy that I've leaned on for information regarding these power stations. And sometimes you give you involve people and then they start copping an attitude and busting your chops when you don't do as planned. And that's what's going on right now. So I'm going to go deep into some wattage issues and this might bore the crud out of you. Uh, because that was a 700 max watt output something, but it only had 284 kilowatt hour capability. I think that was misadvertised as a 700 watt beast. And what matters isn't your total max capacity wattage. It's um, the kilowatt hours that can last. And that one wasn't any better. Uh, it was a predator from Harbor Freight. It said 700, but it wasn't really 700. So what I do think I will do, and there's a problem with buying one of these bigger ones, because this one is like nine, 10 pounds. And it, you can see how big it is roughly. It's about the size of my head. Uh, I would like a bigger one. I would like one with uh, five or 600 kilowatt hours capability, because that could run my heating blanket you know, for like 15 hours, so it should be two nights and you wouldn't have to charge it so much. But the downside with those is they weigh 20 pounds. And this, you can see, I can pick up like this and it's really not a big deal. And I can take it into my gym or into my coffee shop and not look like I'm lugging a whole suitcase in and charge it up. And if I bought one of those big ones to take up a lot more space on my car seat, and yes, it could provide p perhaps two nights of uh, heating blanket use. But I'm not sure I want it to be that much bigger. I don't know that I want a bigger one. What I may want, and this is going deep. This is going deep. Hey, beautiful. Thank you, sir, for sending me those uh, gobble gobbles. This is going deep into car living. And again, I'm not living here. I'm just experiencing it. I am just experiencing it. Maybe instead of getting one 600 watt one, what would be a better idea is getting two 300 watt ones. And having one charging while the other one's heating or what have you. Or might be a better idea to get two little ones. Yeah, I think it might be. Where are some places I'm able to park overnight? I don't think there's any place I couldn't park overnight. 
I don't think there's any place I couldn't park overnight. I got a place I like, a place with a nice view, quiet, convenient. But I don't think there's anywhere I couldn't. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to park overnight right here. And this athletic center does close, so it might get lonely in the parking lot. But, you know, I don't know. Do I cover my windows when I sleep? Uh, Spencer Hughes says it's against the law in most places, which is sad because people have the right. Uh, I mean, that might be a law. You know, maybe uh, there's a lot of laws probably out there that aren't really enforced. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, beautiful, send me a donut. Let's have some coffee. I get to work in two hours and 15 minutes. Somebody keeps saying Uber driver. I don't want to drive an Uber. <laughs> I don't want anybody back there. Mm. Oh, that's so nice. It is coffee with Ken. It is coffee with Ken. It is coffee with Ken. Mm. Oh. Oh. Is the Naperville parking garage is open 24 hours? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I doubt it. I park... Uh, where I work at a parking garage and it says no parking from 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. Uh, so I don't know. I do not know. But I don't worry about it. I don't want to park in a parking garage. It's not a concern. It's not hard. I think a lot of people, again, I talk a lot about this show, how I struggled with anxiety for most of my life. I think a lot of people... Uh, do and they almost put their worry on other people and will ask me well, where are you doing this how are you doing this where are you parking your scooter this guy telling me uber eats would definitely help my financial responsibilities i don't need to help my financial responsibilities i have more money than i need i cover them so i think everyone likes to put their worry on other people because they're worried. Where are you going to park your scooter? What if the, somebody knocks on the door? What if this happens? What if aliens fly in and abduct you? And I will tell you what, for anybody out there that struggled with anxiety and worries about their own stuff enough, steer clear from other people's worry. Steer clear from other people's worry. Because your their worry is not your responsibility. Their worry is not your responsibility. And I think people, they don't even know it. And they they think they're helping or they want to care or want to show that they care. But all they're doing is freaking the person that struggles with anxiety out and not helping them at all. Yeah. Jake Williams is hurt that I'm cheating on Starbucks and their free refills. I don't have time for free refills today. I do not have time for free refills today. I get to go to work. Notice, notice how positive that sounds, that you get to go to work. You guys should try it at home. I get to go to work. And uh, in two hours, and I still have half a cup of coffee to drink. And I still, I don't know if I'm really going to work out. <laughs> uh, this has got cream in it, Edward. This has cream in it. Oh, spilled my coffee. Spilled my coffee. Splashed it on my face. Splashed it on my face. Mmm. 
Uh, yeah, we had our first snow this week, two days ago. We got, or two days ago, was it Thursday? Uh, we got a little snow. It's melted now. Uh, but it was, looked kind of blizzard-like. The wind was coming hard. Uh, temperature was probably 30 degrees. And, uh, uh, that was, yeah, Thursday. I had my two little ones. I'll tell you what, it was hard <laughs> carrying them around. Trying to open a door and get them in and not drop the other one. <laughs> but we managed. We managed. I'll tell you what, it was really nice when we got to Culver's and got them strapped into the seats. Shared a butter burger and some french fries. It was nice. But then again, I had to go out into the frozen tundra and uh, get them back into the car and just get them out of the chair and put one down. And Augie starts running around the restaurant and I'm getting Eve out. And, ah! I don't know. Hey, thank you so much for following the live creator. Thank you so much for following the live creator. Being among beans, first of all, I think is being mean to me. And has been consistently mean to me since he's been following my show. And I don't know why. I don't know why is that being among beans. Why do you say mean things to me? I wonder. And they ask how long I will live in my Kia. I don't know being among beans. Why are you mean to me? And why do you say mean things to me? I wonder. Well, I spilled my new Duquesne shirt. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I know. But again, their niche must be being mean to people and saying mean things. And evidently you can attract a crowd by being mean, being a bully. That's her strategy. So here's to you, Bean. Mm. Oh. But it is Saturday morning. It is Saturday morning. What do I typically make in tips on a Saturday? Uh, a couple hundred bucks, you know. North of 300's not rare at all. You know, you make 300 bucks in it, <clears throat> and that's after taxes, because that's not even counting the hourly, but you make 300 bucks on a day, it yeah, seems like pretty good money. Yeah, our dubs, I like that. Not every day is sunshine, but it's not hard to stay positive and seek the road ahead. Yeah. Somebody from Gambia is hopping on. I've never had a viewer from Gambia. I have never had a viewer from Gambia. I've had viewers from Oregon. I've had viewers from Oregon. Love shy misses being a server. Well, have you thought about doing it again? I'll tell you what, it's, I might work in a really fun restaurant uh, that fits my personality and that they value me enough to give me the freedom to be me. Uh, but I walk around that place and kind of feel like I own it and feel like I can go up to any table and, you know, I'm helping out. I'm clearing glasses or plates or whatever. And uh, I don't know. Everyone's having a good time. And I'm just up there making jokes and being me. And uh, it feels really good. Feels really good. So the only time it doesn't feel good is when I don't have customers. When I don't have customers. Yeah, well, they don't give me all my freedom. You're right about that. You are right about that. 
I talked for about an hour. I kind of feel comfortable talking in my car. It's nice and warm here. Uh, no, I'm not going to get back into financial services. Not going to get back into real estate. I'm going to continue to grow coffee with Ken. And I'm going to continue to wait tables. And I'm going to continue to re generate revenue doing coffee with Ken. And uh, working out. Bringing a good attitude. Smiling more than I cry. Drinking some coffee. Feeling good. Loving myself and forgiving myself. And I hope uh, you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful week. And uh, hope you had a wonderful, wonderful night's sleep. And I hope your Saturday morning is going well. And I hope you're excited about your day. And that you're feeling good. And that you are loving yourself. And that you are forgiving yourself. And hey, by the way, <laughs> kind of like the way this looks. Uh, as always, I hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.